CRAP stands for Constrained Application Protocol. It is based on uh, HTTP protocol and was designed by IETF Constrained uh, RESTful Environment Working Group. COP is a web transfer protocol used for uh, constrained uh, nodes and networks. It is designed for uh, machine to machine uh, communication applications. It is a request response model based uh, protocol. Uh, if you remember the MQTT, uh, we identified it as a subscribe publish model. In that sense, uh, this is very similar to HTTP which is also a request response model. Uh, this protocol works in a client-server interaction method, uh, which is asynchronous uh, over datagram-oriented uh, transport protocol such as UDP. Again, if you remember the MQTT, uh, it uses TCP, which guarantees the uh, communication, but UDP is the low overhead uh, datagram protocol. Resources are, are retrieved from uh, URIs or URLs. Even though COP is uh, similar to HTTP from the request response model point of view, uh, it does not uh, use TCP, uh, but it uses uh, UDP and has provided a lightweight mechanism to uh, provide reliability. They use UDP to reduce the overhead because the TCP come with the full reliability or uh, acknowledgement layer, uh, UDP does not, uh, but that uh, increases the overhead. Because the COP is designed for uh, resource-constrained devices, they have chosen to use with the UDP. COP architecture can be divided into uh, two main sub-layers, uh, messaging and the request response. The messaging sublayer is uh, responsible for reliability and duplication of messages, while the uh, request and uh, response sublayer is responsible for communication. COP has uh, four different uh, message types uh, confirmable, non confirmable, a piggyback, and a separate. Confirmable means that uh, it is used for reliable communication. Unconfirmable means uh, for unreliable communication, piggyback uses the acknowledgement and separate is used for reset. A visualization of the uh, four types of the messages are illustrated here. Uh, you can see that uh, confirmable, uh, non-confirmable, piggyback and uh, separate uh, messages are working in uh, different ways. It is also important to note that the communication between devices in COP can take place uh, using different paths, uh, including some constrained network, uh, different constrained network, uh, or to the internet service or proxy network. Uh, COP also uh, provides uh, multicast support for message groups uh, for certain devices uh, in IPv4 uh, and IPv6. Uh, Similar to HTTP, uh, it also uses a get, a post, put, and delete, uh, same as the uh, typical HTTP request. Here uh, we can compare the uh, traditional uh, web based uh, HTTP uh, request uh, response model uh, versus the COP model. So the HTTP uh, use IPv6 or 4. Uh, the COP uses uh, 6 low band. And then it uses UDP uh, compared to uh, HTTP use uh, TCP. And then from the security point of view, the traditional web uses uh, TLS uh, over TCP. Uh, the COP one uses uh, DTLS uh, over UDP. And then, of course, use uh, HTTP and uh, COP. And then H within HTTP, uh, basically, it is XML. Uh, and for the COP, uh, they use uh, web objects. So that is the uh, kind of uh, comparison uh, between the HTTP and COP. Uh, COP provides uh, confirmable and non-confirmable uh, moods uh, to represent the reliable and unreliable transmission. 
Piggyback uh, is used for client-server direct communication where the server sends its response uh, directly after the receiving the message. And the separate mode is used when the server response comes in a message separate from the acknowledgement and may take some time to be sent by the server. The problem with the traditional HTTP, uh, inefficient uh, content encoding, uh, because when we are browsing HTTP compared to high powerful uh, computers, servers, and laptops, we don't really worry about uh, content encoding. A uh, huge overhead, uh, difficult to pass, uh, require full uh, internet devices. Uh, in COP, uh, there are efficient objects, uh, efficient uh, web, especially uh, they you, uh, use uh, UDP, which is uh, lightweight, uh, which is also used uh, six low pan, uh, which is again a low power uh, optimized IP based uh, network. You can think uh, COP as a counterpart of HTTP, but designed for the uh, resource constrained IP based uh, IoT devices. Now uh, we can compare the uh, two application level protocols we uh, discussed so far. COP and MKDT. COP is a UDP based, uh, uh, slightly unreliable. Uh, MQTT is TCB, more reliable comparatively. COP use uh, request response. MQTT use uh, publish subscribe. Uh, efficiency in LLN. LLN stands for low power and lossy networks. Uh, COP is excellent. Uh, MQTT is good uh, but because of the tcp uh, it adds some overhead uh, security uh, corp has uh, dt ls and then uh, mkt has uh, ssl and uh, tls communication mode uh, corp is one to one uh, client server uh, mqtt is uh, many to many the strength of corp is lightweight fast uh, low overhead, uh, suitable for constraint networks, uses a restful mode uh, that is uh, easy to code, easy to pass data because it is simple, uh, support for multicasting, asynchronous and synchronous messaging. MQTT, uh, because it uh, has a guaranteed delivery, TCP, uh, multiple quality of service options, we discussed there are three levels of options, uh, provide a robust uh, communication, uh, simple management, uh, very scalable because of the uh, broker architecture. Uh, there's a bit of a issue with the uh, centralized uh, nature. Uh, if you look at the uh, weaknesses, uh, because it uses uh, UDP, it is not reliable as a TCP based MKTT. Uh, so the application must ensure the reliability because the protocol itself is not built into the provide reliability. Uh, MQTT is higher overhead for constraint devices compared to the COP. Uh, TCP connections can uh, draw uh, low power devices the battery and there's no, no uh, multicast support. So these are the uh, pros and cons of COP and MQTT. Both are useful in IoT. Uh, depending on the requirements, uh, you can choose either of them uh, for your IoT architecture. Here we can see the visualization of uh, MQTT and COP architecture side by side. Uh, MQTT is a centralized uh, many to many architecture, while COP is a, a one to one architecture uh, in between client and server. MQTT is good for observing the resources or monitoring uh, resources. Uh, COP is best for uh, state transfer models uh, which are not purely event-based because MQTT is event-based because it subscribes for a topic and when the topic comes in, it will forward the message to you. MQTT clients make a long-lived uh, outgoing TCP connection to the broker. Because of that, it is not a problem even though the device might be uh, sit behind a NAT or the uh, network uh, address translation or a router. On the other hand, Kio Corp client and server 
uh, both send and receive data using UDP, which does not maintain a, a connection. In that case, they might want to use tunneling or port forwarding. MQTT uh, provides no support for labeling messages with the type or any other metadata to help clients to understand it. MQTT messages can be used for any purpose, but all clients must know the message format upfront uh, to allow communication. In contrast, COP uh, provides inbuilt support for content negotiation and discovery, allowing devices to probe each other to find uh, ways of uh, exchanging data. What does this mean is that uh, COP provides the web services uh, kind of architecture where when you make a call to the uh, RESTful web service or uh, IoT device, the IoT device will tell you uh, what are the services it exposes. So for example, uh, when you talk to a, a LED light, it will tell you what kind of uh, capabilities and functionalities it exposes as a service. So then uh, you can manipulate uh, those services. So there is a way to discover what are the capabilities of a given device by sending a message, sending a COP request, uh, and without knowing anything about that device, uh, you can learn uh, by sending a message to it. But in the MQTT world, you don't even know what is the uh, sensor is. There's no way to directly communicate with the uh, sensor or the device or the publisher. Uh, you just uh, get the data item. Uh, that's it. So that is a key difference between MQTT and COP. On the right hand side, I have uh, illustrated some uh, research results focusing on uh, trying to find uh, effective messaging protocols for IoT systems. So they have compared the performance of MQTT, COP, HTTP, and AMQP, uh, another uh, similar protocol. So I would like you to ask to pause this video and study the uh, figures uh, in detail. Uh, for example, you can see that in the first one, uh, the plot is uh, message size versus message overhead. So the COP is the uh, lowest message size and the lowered message. Uh, overhead, uh, which means that uh, it is the best for resource constrained devices. And similarly, uh, you can see a similar pattern in uh, power consumption versus resource requirements. Again, same for bandwidth and uh, latency. Uh, in terms of uh, reliability or quality of service versus uh, interoperability. So Interoperability is uh, high in HTTP, uh, but uh, reliability it is uh, somewhat lower. Uh, MQTT is uh, highly uh, reliable and it provides quality of service of uh, multiple levels, uh, but uh, less uh, in terms of uh, interoperability. Finally, the uh, standardization is also an important uh, figure where HTTP is the most mature standard. And then the uh, MQTT is the uh, least mature one, uh, but it is highly used in IoT domain. Because uh, COP is developed on top of HTTP, uh, it is also uh, well-defined and well-standard. We have now reached the end of lesson four, networking and communications. Throughout this uh, lesson, we uh, talk about different communication protocols, uh, architectures, topologies, application protocols. Uh, we compare uh, different ways of uh, communication patterns, uh, as well as the pros and cons of uh, protocols. As I uh, said at the beginning, uh, there is no protocol is better than the other. Uh, it is all depend on uh, what is the task you want to perform. So you need to pick the best fitting uh, uh, communication architecture and protocols uh, to fit your need. In order to do that, uh, you need to know what are the strengths and weaknesses of each of these protocols. 
then by looking at the requirements of your IoT system, uh, you can pick the right choice. And also, uh, if you are developing a large IoT system, there's a chance that you will use combination of these uh, protocols and communication technologies within your IoT system. I hope this lesson helped you to understand the trade-offs of uh, different options available to you when you are designing an IoT system. I hope now you have the uh, basic understanding to go about and uh, do research and find out uh, what is best for your uh, own IoT system design.